First on diversity and inclusion. First on diversity and inclusion. Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Hold on. Time out. Weren't we talking about um, Libra? Cryptocurrency? Changing the world? Making the world a better place? For users of Facebook and generally people all over the world and, and, and Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg emphasized uh, the benefits to poor, you know, his, his, he has to, I mean, he, he has to play up to the altruism, but inclusion and diversity. This book has utterly failed. Facebook's executive ranks and workforce continue to be mostly white and male. Since Reverend Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Push Coalition called upon Silicon Valley companies, including Facebook, to release its diversity statistics more than five years ago, the representation of African Americans and Hispanics has increased by less than 2%. Facebook also told us that they have zero dollars managed by diverse firms. Unbelievable. Facebook has failed. Facebook is a horrible company. It has failed. Why? Because it hasn't met Maxime Walter's standards for what diversity looks like. Not only don't they have a diverse employee base, but they also don't have a diverse, I don't know, investment management team. I mean, every aspect of every aspect of every company now has to qualify by some standard that Jesse Jackson determines of what diversity looks like? Tell with, have you changed the world? Tell with, have you made the lives of people better? Tell with, what are you doing? This is, this is what they're talking about? On fair housing, fair housing. Facebook has been sued by the National Fair Housing Alliance for enabling advertisers to engage in discrimination on its advertising platforms. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has also filed an official charge of discrimination against Facebook for its advertising practices, including the company's own ad delivery algorithms, which were found to have a discriminatory impact when advertisers did not target their audience in discriminatory ways. So the algorithm is discriminating, not just the advertising is discriminating, now the algorithms are discriminating. I mean, I know conservatives, uh, uh, you know, think the algorithms discriminate against them. Minorities think the algorithms discriminate against them. I mean, I think the algorithms discriminate against me. I mean, I should have hundreds of thousands of of likes on Facebook, and I don't, and obviously they discriminate against me. Uh, I mean, Facebook discriminates against everybody, and it's all in the algorithms. Does she even know what an algorithm is? And I don't mean this as an insult to uh, Representative Walters. I think this is to all congressmen. Do they even know what an algorithm is? Could they specify an algorithm? Do they, have they ever seen an algorithm? I mean, again, I emphasize, these are politicians who've done nothing. And we're talking about, we're supposed to be talking about a cryptocurrency. What does this have anything to do with it? Nothing. But you'll see none of the comments by Congressman that I've got for you have anything to do with Libra, the cryptocurrency. I understand that Facebook has refused to cooperate with HUD's fair housing investigation I would refuse by refusing to. to provide relevant data. On competition and fairness, Facebook is the subject of an antitrust investigation by the first on the so, yes, so uh, Facebook is indeed an investigation by the, um, I think, 46, 47 attorney generals and the, st and the Justice Department for antitrust violations. They hate Facebook and they want to break it up. And indeed, this is, this is the one of the few topics the Democrats and Republicans agree on. They all want to go after Facebook. Now, I'd never seen Representative Al Green, I guess, before. Maybe I have, but I, I didn't pay attention to him. But this is off the charts. So um, this makes Maxime Waters seem rational. Listen to this. That the Libra Association oversees the Libra project. Uh, Congressman, yes. And is it true that Global corporations make up the association. Global corporation, code word for those powerful corporations that make a lot of money and control the world and, and try to influence everything that we do. 
Congressman, the, the association is made of, uh, today, 21 companies and nonprofit organizations as well. Of the 21, how many are headed by women? <laughs> I mean, I was expecting some deep, some deep question about conflict of interest, I don't know, about currencies, about finance, about the knowledge of finance. Uh, no, how many of them are headed by women? This is, this is what's important. This, in our day and age, this is what's important to the Democratic Party. This is why so many Americans, in spite of how nutty and Im irrational and immoral and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, this president is, Trump is, in spite of that, they might vote for him because this attitude that the Democrats have is so laughable. And so intolerable. Now, and I'm, you know, I've done shows about uh, women are treated badly and, and, you know, all of, you know, the roots of feminism, where it comes from and the fact that it's, it, it was a legitimate and, you know, and racism and all of that. But this is just absurd. And again, you're wasting the time of one of the most productive people on planet Earth to ask him how many women run, I mean, how does Mark Zuckerberg have the patience? And how isn't he rolling around laughing? And why, and this is the real question, why doesn't he have the moral backbone and the moral courage to stand up and tell them to go to hell, all of them, just to go to hell? Uh, Congressman, I do not know the answer to that off the top of my head, oh my but God. I can get it for you. Well, I believe you can get it, Mr. Zuckerberg, but I... One would assume that you would know who heads these corporations that are going to be running this global company. You mean Mike Zuckerberg doesn't have a tally in his head on how many of the companies he associates with are run by women? It gets better. Um, how many of them are minorities, Mr. Zuckerberg? Uh, Congressman, I, I do not know off the top of my head. Well, really, I mean, any, anybody who cares about race, anybody who's a racist, should keep an ongoing tally of how many of the different races that are actually running companies. I mean, that's what you should do. You should tally these things up in your head. And you should always be prepared, particularly when you're going to, when you're going to give a presentation about your new exciting venture, your new exciting way to change the world called Libra. Any members of the LGBTQ plus community? I wonder if, if uh, maybe, maybe Mark can, um, can send out a questionnaire to all the members of the, uh, of the uh, Libra uh, Association with uh, and asking them about their sexual preferences. How do you think that would go along? You, you think that would be a good idea? A sexual preference questionnaire. Also about maybe all of Facebook employees so that he can give an exact number associated with this association, Mr. Zuckerberg? Uh, Congressman, I, I don't know the answer. Who, conf uh, who acknowledge? There are many people who acknowledge that they are a part of the community. They wear it on their, actually wear it on their forehead. They, they, they announce it, not just acknowledge it, they advertise it. I mean, really? CEOs of major corporations who happen to be, there's a gay, I mean, I mean maybe, I mean, there are a lot of them, I'm sure. But, you, you should be able to know this and be able to tally it. I mean, it's, it's nuttiness. It's insanity. And this is what Congress is doing. This is the job Congress, this is what we send our taxpayer money for, for these clowns to integrate a businessman about how many of his business associates are LGBTQ. Sorry? You do not, you do not know. Mr. Zuckerberg, is it true that the overwhelming majority of persons associated with this endeavor are white men? Uh, Congressman, I, I don't know off the top of my head the list of the people who are running the organizations in, in the, the association. 
Well, is it what do you say to that? I mean, it is so nutty. It is so insane that I, I don't know where you go with this. Again, I'm the first one to be willing, and I get harassed here on, on, uh, on, on my chat constantly, about the fact that, yes, there's, there's been and there is discrimination against all kinds of people out there. And we should all be aware of that. And rational people don't discriminate over things that are not significant and not essential. And we should judge people when they discriminate. But it's none of the government's business. And it's certainly none of the government's business to put this at the forefront of everything. We're going to keep going because that's not all. It keeps going. All right. This is Representative Ayanna Presley, another member of the House Financial Service Committee. The same World Bank report cited in your Libra white paper finds that almost two-thirds of 1.7 billion people who don't have bank accounts say it's because they lack enough money to open one. So this is not about authentication. This is not about banking costs. This is about a tsunami of hurt that millions are experiencing because of a $1.6 trillion student debt crisis. Now this, this is good, right? So he, he started out his whole, he, he made his whole presentation about how this is going to help the poor. And good for Presley. She's calling him on it. She said, poor people, you know, there are other reasons they're poor. It's not because, now, she's lying because actually facilitating a better mechanism for them to be able to transact actually makes their life better. But she's calling on him on, on the altruism. And I actually had a different clip of her. Let's see if this, if this is what I wanted at the end here, uh, where she asked him this funny question. Children's inheritance in Libra. Oh, yeah. L listen to this. All what is inherently an issue of wealth. At the end of the day, you are a business. So what is in yeah. the business interest for you here? And do you believe in what you are building? Do you believe in what you are building? Uh, Congresswoman, yes. Now note this question. This is such a disgusting question to ask. He's already said this is a risky proposition. He's already said it doesn't know if it'll work. And this is what a congresswoman asks. So yes or no, would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? What relevance does that have to anything? Isn't he already leaving his children's inheritance behind in Facebook? This is an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs who start new businesses can't guarantee the results. They can't guarantee the success. But he's already investing his wealth through Facebook in establishing this thing. But, wow. Uh, Congresswoman. Do you believe in what you're building? Yes, I, I do. And, and Would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? I think it's a fair question uh, yeah, because I, I think it's, it's you've proven that we cannot trust you with our emails, with our phone numbers. So why should we trust you with our hard-earned money? Well, Congresswoman, reclaiming I, my time, if you can't answer yes or no, would you leave behind your children's inheritance in Libra? Yeah, she doesn't let him answer the question. She doesn't let him answer the question. It's, it's just so disgusting. Right? So disgusting. All right, uh, two more. Representative Katie Porter. Wow. All right, listen to this. Facebook's known as a great place to work. Free food, ping pong tables, great employee benefits. But Facebook doesn't use its hardest jobs in the company. You've got about 15,000 contractors watching murders, stabbings, suicides, other gruesome, disgusting videos for content moderation, correct? Uh, Congressman, yes, I believe that that's correct. You pay many of those workers under $30,000 a year, and you've cut them off from mental health care when they leave the company, even if they have PTSD because of their work for your company. So now the issue is not Libra. It's not diversity. It's the way Facebook 
treats its contract employees, employees that don't have to work there, employees that can get a different job, employees that have chosen voluntarily to be there, employees that, you know, they, it's a horrible job. They watch all this awful stuff that Facebook screens out. They watch, you know, borderline stuff that they have to decide, they have to make decisions about whether to, to put it on the platform or not. This is the people who do a lot of the screening, a lot of it's for sex and violence and other things. And she's complaining about their work conditions. Is that correct? Um, Congresswoman, my understanding is we pay everyone, including the contractors associated with the company, at least a $15 minimum wage in, in markets and in cities where there's a high cost of living, that's a $20 minimum wage. We go out of our way Thank to you. offer I, a I lot take of your word at the wage. Health. Reclaiming my time. He shouldn't. He, 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 see, they won't even let him answer. Right? Claiming my time means I'm going to speak. Shut up. Um, they won't let him answer. She doesn't care about the answer. He won't fight. He won't really fight back. He will just give this dry. But he, he shows no moral indignation. He show. He, he. I mean, imagine again. Imagine if they stood up. If he stood up. Um, according to one report I have, and this is straight out of an episode of Black Mirror, these workers get nine nine minutes of supervised wellness time per day. That means nine minutes to cry in the stairwell while somebody watches them. Would you be willing to commit? to spending one hour a day for the next year watching these videos and acting as a content monitor and only accessing, accessing the same benefits available to your workers. Now, the answer you should give to this is, lady, my time is way too valuable to spend at something like that. I, this would not do good, be good for the shareholders. It would not be good for me. It would not be good for anybody. I am way too productive to do that kind of work. Uh, Congresswoman, we, we work hard to make sure that we give good benefits to all the folks who are doing I, this. Mr. Zuckerberg, reclaiming my time, I would appreciate a yes or a no. Uh, would you be willing to act as a content monitor? Again, yes or no, right? Uh, they don't want answers. Life experience. I'm not sure that it would best serve our community for me to spend that much reclaiming time. Reclaiming my time. Mr. Zuckerberg, I, I, I spend a reclaiming lot of time my time. See, she won't let him finish the answer. And of course, he does say it wouldn't serve our community best. Now, you know, again, the Weasley words that he uses. But just think about what she's asking him. Would you be willing to be the janitor for the day? How about you once, once you know, one, one day a week work as a janitor? I mean, words escape me. <laughs> the outrage is so intense. All right, here we go. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she is part of the financial committee. Again, she has all the qualifications, we know. She is, a, you know, I think you got a number of degrees. No, I mean, she, she knows nothing. Uh, but let's listen to her grilling him again. Uh, the, test, the, the whole point of this, the whole point of this is to... Discuss Libra, a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Now, she is going to ask questions about an important topic, but not relevant to Libra. Now, she's going to ask questions about an important topic, which she is wrong about. Now, these, this video actually went viral. Everybody was praising her, how wonderful she is, how amazing she was. You judge that the official policy of Facebook now allows politicians to pay to spread disinformation. Notice the official policy of Facebook is not, not to fact check political ads. But that's not what she says. She says that uh, the, 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 the policy of Facebook is to allow politicians to spread disinformation. Disinformation. That's how she phrases it. It is so dishonest. Um, in 2020 elections and in the future. So I just want to know how far I can push this um, in the next year. Under your policy, you know, using census data as well, could I pay to target predominantly black zip codes and advertise them the incorrect election date? 
No, Congresswoman, you couldn't. We now notice Zuckerberg gives a really good answer, I think a good answer here. We have, even for these policies around the newsworthiness of, of mm -hmm. content that politicians say and the general principle that I believe that. But you said you're not going to fact check my we, ads. We have, if, if, uh, if anyone, including a politician, is saying things that uh, can cause, that is calling for violence or uh, could risk imminent physical harm or voter or census suppression mm -hmm. when we roll out the census suppression policy, um, we will take that content down. So, so, so he's basically saying, you know, you can say whatever you want in a political ad, and and Google and, and Facebook is now emphasizing this. We are not; they are not fact-checking political ads, which I think is great, which is the right policy. But they're saying, you know, but there's certain things that are not acceptable. Political ads around elections. If you're going to provide disinformation about the logistics of the election, if you're going to preach violent, if you're going to advocate for violence, those we will take down. So he's making a nuanced differentiation between those things. But she can't handle that. Well, there is some threshold where you will fact check political advertisements. Is that what you're telling me? Well, Congresswoman, yes, and for specific things like that, where there's imminent risk of harm. Could I but run ads? <laughs> Again, won't let him talk. Targeting Republicans in primaries saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? Sorry, yeah, she I, could. Can you repeat that? Would I be able to run advertisements on Facebook targeting Republicans in primary saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? I mean, if you're not fact-checking political advertisements, I'm just trying to understand the, the bounds here. What's fair Congresswoman, game? Congresswoman, I, uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I think So probably. you don't know if I'll be able to do that? I think probably. Um, do you see a potential problem here with a complete lack of fact-checking on political advertisements? Well, Congresswoman, I think lying is bad, and I think if you were to run an ad that had a lie, that would be bad. That's different from it being, uh, from it, from, for in our position, the right thing to do to prevent uh, your constituents or people in an election from seeing that you had lied. I mean, really? They want, I mean, they want, and it's not just them, it's, it's across the political spectrum, they want Facebook to evaluate political ads and decide what is true and what is not. Now, by my standards, uh, you know, I, I think, I think uh, Andrew Young, Yang put out a, a thing about, you know, Facebook should, should uh, uh, you know, do this uh, fact-checking online. And my perspective is, if you did that properly, if you did that, you know, really, in terms of political ads, there would be no political ads. Because they all lie all the time. I mean, think about the, the amount of misrepresentation in political advertising. And what, what Zuckerberg is saying, he's saying in a polite way, he's saying is, if you lie, then your constituency should see that you lie and should penalize you for lying. It's not Facebook's job to determine whether you lie or not. It's the voter's job to figure out whether you're lying or not. And that's absolutely right. This is completely on the voters not on Facebook. But a number of people followed up on this. This wasn't just AOC. A number of people went after Zuckerberg about this idea that he is, that they, that, you know, uh, he is now, Facebook is now not going to fact check political ads. I don't know if they ever did, but they certainly are not going to fact check political ads by politicians, by third parties, maybe, particularly if they're, if they're you know, fake accounts, but they're not Paid political ads by politicians are not going to be fact. Imagine if they got into the business of fact checking those. Imagine the hysteria if one of OEOC's ads was determined by Facebook to be inappropriate. Imagine what would happen. I mean, all hell would break loose. <sighs> all right, let's uh, hear the final. Hand. So we can. So you won't take down lies, or you will take down lies? I think it's just a pretty simple yes or no. Congresswoman, uh, in... I'm not talking about spin. I'm talking about actual disinformation. Well, yes, in most cases, in a democracy, the I believe that people should be able to see for themselves Good what answer. politicians that they may or may not vote for so are you saying won't take them their down. character for themselves. So you won't take... You may flag that it's wrong, but you won't take it down. They won't even flag it. Uh, Congresswoman, it's, uh, it, it depends on the context that it shows up, organic post... 
as right. the, the treatment is a little One different. question, one more question. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's Congress for you. That's, uh, that's who we elect to represent us. That's the people out there who are, um, you know, what can you say, who are, uh, <laughs> who are trying to protect our individual rights. And, and notice the tone. Notice the condescension. Notice the attitude, right? Right? Notice the attitude that these people have. Innovated. Unfortunately, there's no way to launch something like Libra without a support of the regulators. And uh, Facebook is working with the Treasury Department and other regulatory agencies, the Fed, to try to figure out how to launch this. But we already know that the people at the head of the Treasury and the people at the head of the Federal Reserve oppose this. So how, how are we going to get innovation in the financial industry? I do not know when these clowns are the people who actually make decisions about the future of finance. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so... I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...